Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about assertions in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics mapping data flows. So you can set assertions in your data flow by using the assert transformation. And it's useful for a number, number of different use cases. And two of those I'm going to demo for you today would be to establish data quality rules, number one. And the second one is going to be to add data validation to your existing data flows. So I'll demo both of those for you, and um, we're going to start with a brand new data flow that will add the data quality rule that's going to look at the end when we're done with it. It's going to look something like this. So what you see on my screen is an already pre-painted picture of what the data flow with an assertion for data quality rules would look like. Let me walk you through this, and then we'll start over from scratch, so I'll show you how to do it. I have two sources in this data flow, and they're both addresses coming from the AdventureWorks database. The first one is um, this address SQL, address SQL table. The projection looks like this. And we do have country region in here. So I'm going to say that I'm going to set a rule for my data that says that um, the only valid data that can work in my data flow is going to be coming from the US. So any other country is going to be invalid. So I'm going to set a rule for that. The second source is another set of uh, address data coming from AdventureWorks. This table is the AW Cust address table, slightly smaller schema, and we're going to be able to cross-reference these two and merge them together in the same assertion to be able to have multiple rules inside of that assertion, including do the rows based on the address ID, do they exist in both of these tables? So we're going to add that in an assert transformation, and then in there we can have n a number of rules. In this case, I have one of each type. There is a true and exists and unique type of rule. And you can have as many as you like in here. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially say that if this expression is true, which is that the country is the United States, then it's a valid rule. Otherwise, it's not a valid rule. And then, yeah, I'll walk you through the rest of the um, expression conditions as we go. Let's go ahead and get started and build a new data flow. So we're going to say new data flow. Let's add in those two address sources. So the first one we'll just say is address. We'll call it address and we'll look for the address SQL table from AdventureWorks. Let's see the projection. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Now the second source is going to be the customer addresses. So we'll call it cust address and my data set for cust address. And while we're naming things, while we're here, let's go ahead and name the data flow as we'll call it customer quality. <clears throat> All right, let's add an assertion. So we're going to go to that top row, the row that had the country region in it. And we're going to add an assert transformation in here. You're going to find it under row modifier. And the reason why it's row modifiers is it's going to ADF will add a tag into the row if your assertion fails. All right, let's build just that first row. So there are other options on here that we'll come to later. Like you can ask Data Factory to fail the data flow as soon as it is done executing. Uh, I'm sorry, as soon as the, you can ask Data Factory to fail the data flow as soon as your assertion fails. And then you can also add additional streams to look for the existence of rows across multiple streams. However, in this case, we're just going to do this a um, simple single expect true. So we're going to evaluate an expression that must um, result in a uh, Boolean value that is true. And I'm not going to fail it. I'm just going to have Data Factory tag that row. So let's build out, build out the rule. Expect true. This is going to be the um, rule that says that all the data has to be of the country region of US. So I'm going to call the, I'm going to give the um, a certain ID, which is a string. So I'm going to call it um, US only. Let's see, I'll call it assert US only. And for description, you can use expressions and you can use row values in here. So I'm going to say the country region, which means that you will be outputting the actual region and country in this case. And I'm going to append to it um, is not valid. That'll be the description that comes out when the assertion fails. Now you can filter your expression, your Boolean evaluation to only certain rows. I'm not going to use that in this case. This is optional. I mean, instead, just go right to the expression. And the expression I'm going to use is country region must be United States. So this is an assertion, which means that you want to set the true value here. Remember, this is called expects true, expect true. So when this expression evaluates to true, the row will pass. When it does not, the row will, will fail. You can fail the entire data flow or just tag the row. All right, I think that's that's enough for now. Let's go ahead and preview the data now with the assertion turned on. Okay, and when the data comes back, you can ind indeed see that the non-US regions are marked as error rows inside of my data preview. Now, as you add more assertions into your assert transformation, you can ask Data Factory to only give you the results from that assertion when you're looking at the results here inside the data preview. All right, so let's add another type of rule. Let's go back. And we're going to add a unique rule. 
So we have a column that is essentially the um, primary key, which is address ID. We want to make sure that's unique. Otherwise, the data has a data quality issue. So let's add expect unique. And we're going to say that address ID. Now the description is going to say the address ID found. I'm going to turn this into cast this to a string. It's not unique. All right, it's great. No filter for this one either. And then for the the expression, then uh, we only have to pick down, pick out a column. Now you can build an expression if you like. In my case, I just want to make sure that you that primary key is the unique identifier, and that is unique. Now let's do one more rule. Let's add a third. Also notice because I'm using multiple assertions inside of the single assert transformation, I just called the transformation as assert. If you separate your rules out to individual transformations, then you can probably give it a more unique or specific name as to what is occurring inside of that transformation. This is really a, a generalized assertion check of many different rules. Now I want to add a third, which is called expect exists. That will check, expect exists will check uh, just like the exist transformation does for the existence of the row in a secondary stream. First thing you have to do is add as an additional stream the other stream you want to check. Now you'll see expect exist appear. So what I'm going to say is that because this is an assertion, I want it to be true. So I want the row to exist in both. Uh, so my description in this case would, uh, I'm not going to use an expression this time. Let's just say in this case, um, let's just say the row, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and uh, use an expression. Let's say address ID, you know, when it wants to cast this, is not present in both tables. There we go, that works for me. Now for the expression, I'm only going to just look at a single column, so I don't need to use an expression. I'll just pull down from the picker. I'll say address ID from the address source, and then I'm going to say address ID from the customer address source. And that should do it. Now let's go ahead and data preview. Let's pick a different, um, we'll do a refresh on this, and then we'll pick a different assertion to test. We'll test each of them. So let's first look at the assert three, which was my exists true, which I should have given a more meaningful name to. Let's go back and we'll fix that. Need to expand this column a little bit, and there, there, there's a failed row right there. Let's go ahead and fix that because that is kind of a little bit bothering me. We'll say assert exists. All right, assess those as errors downstream. All right, so now that we've set the assertions, let's take a look at how we can also process some of those assertions later on in your data flow. You can access those as errors. So inside of a drive column in this case, you can also use, you know, conditional split would be a good use for trapping these errors as well. But let's just use a drive column just for the uh, this example. So what I'll say is, in this first expression, I'll just say is error, and that will just tell me, Boolean true or false, is this row an error for some reason, you know, an assertion failed. Let's add another column. In this case, we're going to actually look for a specific error code from the assert ID that we had set earlier. And the one, the assertion I had created was called assert US only. So we'll look just for that error. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that should be good enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the data looks like now. Okay, so we've adorned the two error traps on the end. So column one was is error, column two was um, does this have the error of US only? All right, so Canada, yep, is error, um, and it is an error because it is uh, not US, uh, US address. Right. Okay, now let's take a look at adding an assertion to an existing data flow to do some data validation. So on this screen, I have an existing loans data flow that I've had for quite some time, and I want to add an assert, or a couple of asserts to it to validate the data inside of it. And let's also validate uh, some metadata using an assert. So the first thing you see that I have is a conditional split, which is splitting on the term. So if the term of the loan is 36 months that I'm redirecting to this sink, if it's not, everything else goes to that sink. Another way to do that would be to add an assert instead. So if I did assert, and then I would say assert ID is term, Let's do, it's called assert term. And we would say that the description would be um, term must be 36 months. Okay, I'm not gonna use the dynamic expression in this instance. Uh, no filter. And then for the expression, we would say that the term must have in it the string of 36, I think is the way that I did it. I'm gonna say is not equal to zero. 
this is saying that the index for that for 36 months was found inside of that term. Let me validate, and that's how I'm doing this. Yes, that's correct. So then what that means is that I'm going to refresh this. Any row that is not a 36 month term it said be an error row. So what I can do is instead of trapping for an explicit term in my conditional split, I can just trap on the error in the conditional split. So the 60 month terms showed an assertion failure. Now what we do is go over to the conditional split and instead of that condition, we will simply say has error. I called it assert term. This, what this would actually do is this would actually be the opposite, right? Because if the assertion failed, this would actually be other term. Now, if I had built this initially with assertions, I would have done it the opposite, but I'll just show you that you can just negate that and just say not has error. So if it passed, then the term is 36. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And there the term is 36 months. And if we say other term, we should then see every other term. So that's 36 months. And those are all marked as having failed the assertion. Okay, we have time for one more. Let's go ahead and take a look at metadata. So let's go down to the second stream in this data flow. And I have an ID, which is the unique identifier, which is integer. And I have grade, which is a string. So let's say that for the absolute minimum to be a valid set of data coming in, in order to validate the data, the incoming data, I need to have grade that is a value of let's say A, B, C, or D, cannot be null, and then the ID has to be a digit that is one, two, three, four, five, six places. All right, let's add an assertion to test both of those. So I add the assert right after the source, and the first thing we'll do is we will do a, we'll call this a grade check, assert grade. And then here I will say that grade, the, the, the dynamic value for grade for each row is not valid no filter and then for the expression we will say that um, this must evaluate the true which is um, not is null grade and grade let's use in let's do the other way around so we'll do an array of a c all right so that seems like a solid rule and the second rule is going to be to also expect true this is going to be assert uh, let's do let's first do uniqueness right because um the the ID is going to be a primary key. We'll say that the ID is not unique. So we'll say um, ID, cast it. And then um, let's go ahead and make this a unique rule. And the column is going to be ID. And then for the, no, it's just, just one, it's fine. And then for the last rule, this is where we will say that the assert ID value, which had to be six digits. So we can say something like, let's do it this way. We will. So the length two string ID has to be six. There you go. So there's how you add assertions for data quality and data validation into your data flows. Thanks for watching.